So I'm here at the Fly Tackle Dealer Show in Denver, Colorado. It's September 2010, and I found the greatest bamboo fly rod maker in Colorado, my buddy Jeff Hatton. He's also the author of this book over here, Rod Crafting, a full color pictorial and written history of bamboo fly rods, not just bamboo, but all wooden fly rods. So this is Jeff. Jeff, tell us about what you're doing. Uh, Rob, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the passion runs deep. I've tried to take from my knowledge what I know of the old. I've tried to combine it with the new to come up with what I feel is a high performance work of art. That's how I build my rods. Um, the old style of mortise grips without cork. As a rod maker, I have to apologize to every angler in the world for all of us rod makers. Because the worst thing we've done in the last 150 years is applied nature's finest natural dampening material to our rods. Here we are making tools for a sport based on feel, and what we do is we insulate ourselves away from the feel by using cork. With this full wood grip, everything that happens you feel. There is the responsiveness of the rods is increased by anywhere from 20 to 40 percent by not having cork on. There are just it makes a huge difference in the action of the rod and the feel of the rod. A good parable would be the modern bass fishermen. Those guys are using rods that they can feel the blanks so they can feel exactly what's going on over the cork, over the foam, the EVA foam that some of these guys are using for their grips. It's, it, it, to me, it's, it's a silly thing because the sport's based on feel and this is so much more of an intimate feel than cork. I, I've spoiled myself with them. I hate fishing rods with cork because it takes so much away. And the, one of the real plus sides of it is you feel what your rod's doing, so that makes you a better caster and it makes you a better fisherman. And we were talking yesterday, I, I picked up uh, this new little guy you've got there behind you, and the first thing that struck me was how much backbone that, that uh, what, what do you call that handle again? It's a mortise grip. A mortise? Mortise. How, how much more backbone that gives the bamboo rod? It, it fills in, it takes the place of a swell butt, it moves the action forward in the rod a little bit, and these are some very desirable things for people who are transitioning from graphite to bamboo. As you get into the bamboo, you'll, you'll find yourself looking for rods that are maybe a little slower and a little softer, and eventually you'll have rods that are cork grip that will flex fully into the grip for certain circumstances and situations. I really like these fast action rods, even though they're bamboo. I know that's an anomaly, but they are truly a fast action rod, and they're a, they're a high performance fishing tool. Now, now show me this uh, real seat that you've developed. I'm really proud of this. This is the Hatton Swiveling Hood Real Seat. It's literally a slide band and a half is all. And it's wide. You notice it's the entire shaft of the rod. That allows for any very large, wide feet. The other thing about it that I've done is I've made it so that the butt cap will actually back off. This allows you to accommodate very long-footed real feet. This is one of the things within our industry that even still we fight today is the consistency far as real seat hardware goes. Real feet are not consistent from one maker to another for the most part. They're usually different and that's a bad thing. And that's what inspired the hat and swiveling hood. It's a taper. This will slide onto the taper which actually allows it to lock. The real foot will actually come out flat and actually be above this low point. Low point, and when this comes on, that'll almost try to force the real foot to bend. So it's actually a tension fit. That's brilliant. So Jeff, I notice here you've got an incredible collection of historic uh, rods and flies, uh, and you mentioned uh, the other day that you've got a couple of uh, of new additions to your collection. Could you show those to us? I'd be honored. Right over here, we have, about four months ago, this rod appeared on eBay. This rod right here. On eBay? On eBay. This is the oldest known party to exist at this time. 
It's probably a gold metal rod. It has a serial number of 206, and it's completely different than any other font used on any serial numbers on any Hardy rod. I have a couple other Hardys, and it's completely different. Um, wow, look at this. Just beautiful. It's... And, and you said you found it on eBay. What kind of a deal did you get? I stole it out of Hardy's backyard for an $85 bill plus shipping. Wow. I, it's, to me, it's an irreplaceable piece of our history. This is incredible. This is an important piece. No kidding. Uh, among very, a lot of important pieces you have here. So what, what is the oldest, what is the oldest fly rod? Right over here. This rod right here is a John Conroy Porter's General Rod. Now, this rod came into the collection only a couple of months ago. This is the oldest dated American-made rod found to date. This rod was owned by a man of the name of T.J. Weeks in 1846. Wow. In 1847, going through the historical records, I found out that Mr. Weeks spent three weeks in a New Hampshire jail for breaking the game laws. Got a funny feeling you got busted poaching with this rod. And it was probably not a good three weeks, as it was three weeks of hard labor. I love poaching. And at that time, I'd imagine the labor was really hard. Wow. But here we have the oldest American-made rod that's dated. That is fantastic. Found to date. Let's see if I can get any of this up here for folks to see. Wow, that is incredible. And so this would be a fly rod? This was a Porter General rod. It was made up into multiple, it would make up into multiple different rods. It was used for fly, it was used for bait, it was used for trolling. Interesting. It, this is one of the original That's cool. combination rods. Now, now if we go even further back in your display, are we going back in time we here? We are. We're going way back. Wow. At this point, these last two cases in the display are all Civil War or earlier. Civil War or earlier. In this case here, this rod right here, had the great honor of putting a couple of these pieces into Daryl Martin's hands here yesterday. And poor Daryl, he looks at these others and he says, man, these are old. He says, but this one is ancient. Wow. Daryl, Martin, John Betts. I've had several guys look at this rod and we've all pretty well agreed this is probably an American-made rod pre-1800. Pre-1800. So 1775 is your early uh, estimate. Uh-huh. And again, this rod might be used for every kind of fishing. Yeah. What was was fly fishing the dominant style of fishing back then, or were there uh, w w was conventional tackle already popular? Oh, well, it was. They were they were doing conventional tackle. They were doing fly fishing, but they didn't really differentiate between the two. One of the special things about this old rod is look at how consistent the patina is from the wood to the metal. Mm. The only way you can achieve this is through sheer age. And if you look really close at this guide, look at how small this guide is. That's a line guide? That is the only line guide on this section. And you notice that the bridle is actually mortised into the shaft and it's held in with handmade rosehead nails. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Incredible. This was another steal off of eBay. Knowledge is a powerful thing. This rod came to the Gnome's Traveling Rod Show for a grand total of $25. Oh it my was god. So old and so archaic people had no clue of what they were looking at. Oh my god, $25 for the oldest fishing rod. Oh my gosh. So Jeff, I heard rumor that uh, Roger White at the Camp Sherman store is trying to woo you to come out to Oregon's Bamboo Festival on the Metolius, is that right? It is. I had a, a wonderful talk with Roger. It's a real pleasure to meet him. I've been looking forward to that for a long time and I've been trying to figure out how to get out to Metolius. Um, it's kind of, I think time-wise it's on one of our gatherings here in Colorado and might have to wait another year or two until we do our 10th one here in Colorado because I have to be here for all 10. Well I know our bamboo guys in Oregon will love your display and will love to meet you uh, and thank you so much for taking the time to explain this. Again this is Jeff Hatton and, the, and his shop in Colorado is the Gnome Custom Fly Rod, Gnomish Rod Works, Life is Short, Fish Wood,